feel that we now in the 21st century we take technology for granted well yeah because now we live in an, in an amazing amazing world and it's wasted on the on the crappiest generation of just spoiled idiots <laughs> that don't care because this is what people are like now they got their phone and they're like uh it won't give it a second <laughs> give it, it's going to space can you give it a second to get back from space is the speed of light too slow it's true. Yeah. Yeah. I was on a, I was on an airplane and there was internet high speed internet on the airplane. That's yes. the newest thing that I know exists. And I'm sitting on the plane and they go, "Open up your laptop. You can go on the internet." And it's fast. And I'm watching YouTube clips. It's I'm in an airplane, and then it breaks down. And they apologize. The internet's not working. The guy next to me goes, "This is bull." <laughs> like how quickly the world owes him something. Yes. He knew existed only 10 seconds ago. Right. Right. And on planes... I mean, flying is the worst one because people come back from flights and they tell you their story. And it's like a horror story. It's they act like their flight was like a cattle car in the 40s in Germany. That's yeah. how bad they make it sound. Right. They're like, it was the worst day of my life. First of all, we didn't board for 20 minutes. And then we get on the plane, and they made us sit there on the runway for 40 minutes. We had to sit there. Oh, really? What happened next? Did you fly through the air incredibly like a bird? Did you partake in the miracle of human flight, you non-contributing zero that you got to fly? You're flying! It's amazing! Everybody on every plane should just constantly be going, oh my god! Wow! Yes! You're flying. You're, you're sitting in a chair in the sky. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Peace be upon you. In chapter 14, verse 34, it reads, and he gives you all kinds of things that you implore him for. If you count God's blessings, you can never encompass them. Indeed, the human being is transgressing unappreciative. In 1618, it reads, If you count God's blessings, you cannot possibly encompass them. God is forgiver, most merciful. And this is a reality, that if we even attempted to count all the blessings that God has given us, we wouldn't be able to, not only because there's an infinite number of blessings, because we can't even grasp all the blessings that God has provided for us. And in one verse, God is saying that the human being is transgressing, unappreciative. And the other one, it says, God is forgiver, most merciful. And the response is how we react to these blessings. It's one thing to not be aware of them, but it's another thing to be unappreciative, to be undeserving of them. Because God has given us all these blessings for nothing. When all the angels said, hey, send all the human beings to hell, God allowed us another chance into this world to be redeemed, to become appreciative. And if you just try to grasp from the moment you wake up for a single day, all the infinite number of blessings, I mean, we can't even wrap our heads around it. And we think that we only have these five senses, sight, sound, touch, smell, taste. But we have so many other senses that, again, we're just oblivious to. We have the ability of being able to sense pain. This is separate from sense of touch. Uh, people who can't sense pain, they actually don't live very long because all of a sudden they get a minor wound, it turns infected, and because the pain receptors are never there, they never get it treated and they end up dying prematurely. We're able to tell the difference between hot and cold. Again, this is beyond touch and surface and being able to identify, you know, rough or so uh, smooth, but being able to tell the difference between hot and cold. So that when we put our hand on a stove, we know instantly to take it off before our brain even processes that information. Being able to tell up from down. Um, some people, if they have uh, uh, problems with their balance, they can't even stand up because the second they do, they get into a complete uh, haze uh, to the point that they immediately start vomiting. And you think about this, that this is something that is happening to us every day. Uh, this ability of being able to tell up from down and being able to uh, balance ourselves that we take for granted, being able to ex uh, feel acceleration. When you're in a car and the car accelerates or it comes to a sudden stop and your body automatically reacts, that's because we have the set receptors in our um, 
bodies to be able to identify uh, acceleration as well as deceleration, um, knowing where our limbs are, where are our, our hands and our feet and our toes and our fingers and our arms. Uh, this is a, a sensory called pre-preoception, proprioception. And this is a blessing because imagine if you didn't know where your arms were. You had to consciously think about where are my hands, where are my arms, where are my legs. Uh, you wouldn't be able to coordinate. You wouldn't be able to walk, yet alone uh, do daily uh, functions. Um, being able to tell the, the passing of time, the fact that when you wake up in the morning and you can tell, okay, you know, 20 minutes has gone by and you're, uh, it's time to leave to go to school, to go to work, to drop off the kids. This is a blessing. Imagine if you couldn't tell the passing of time. And there's so many of these blessings that we forget. And just think about it. The moment you woke up, when you took that first breath, when life was resurrected back into your body, did you think about God? Did you say, thank you, God? From when you open up your eyes and you first see light come into your eyes and you can distinguish light from dark, uh, that you realize that there's consciousness, uh, that your body came from a state of being completely immobile while you were sleeping to being fully accessible. Um, there's a comedian, his name is uh, Mike Biglia, and uh, he has a condition where he can't control his body when he's uh, when he sleeps to the point that he acts out his dreams. So he had a dream that uh, he was on a second story of a hotel, and um, in his dream he thought that he was being attacked in the Iraq war, and he jumps out the window and starts running full sprint while he's deep asleep. And when he comes to, he realizes what happens, and he's covered in blood and cut up, and he has to go to an emergency room. And he has to sleep with mittens in a sleeping bag so he doesn't cause damage to himself. And when you slept, the fact that you were able to go into an immobile state, that you weren't acting out your dreams, did you think about that blessing that you were able to have a comfortable night's sleep, that you had a bed to sleep on, that you had a roof over your head, that you had to, the ability of adjusting your temperature either by wearing, you know, warm clothes or uh, wearing a t-shirt or, you know, the, the blanket you chose, you know, these are all blessings. Um, on the flip side, there was a professor and he had the uh, alternate uh, condition where all of a sudden the chemical that was it's meant to paralyze your body while you sleep so you don't hurt yourself while you sleep, this would come to him randomly. So throughout the day, all of a sudden the chemical would be released and he would be unable to move his body, yet he's fully awake because his body was sending a signal telling it that he was sleeping. And this happens to us, and we don't even realize it, that when we go to sleep, that this chemical is released, that it immobilizes our body so we don't harm ourselves. That when we wake up and we open up our eyes and we see 7 million different colors surrounding us, giving us uh, clarity in our day-to-day, -day, allowing us to be appreciative. And maybe when you woke up, you know, if you live with uh, your parents, your kids, your spouse, uh, and you're able to identify and recognize those faces, and you get that little dopamine rush when you see their face, you get that oxytocin, the love uh, hormone release. And there's people out there who uh, have uh, prosopagnosia, where they can't recognize the faces of a stranger or a loved one. It all kind of meshes together. And you think how amazing this is, that you can identify a face out of billions of people and recognize this is the face of someone you love. Uh, there was a person who had a condition where the emotional response to the face was severed. So when they would see a face, they would recognize the face as their spouse, their child, their dog. But when it came to having that emotional response, it was lacking. And they thought that these people were imposters because part of the recognition isn't just seeing the face. It's that emotional response we get when we identify the face. And all this is happening and it's absolute astonishment. And you go out throughout your day and your heart is going to beat over 115,000 times without you having to will anything. It does it just on its own. You never get tired of having a beating heart. Uh, when you breathe, you breathe in the oxygen and it takes the oxygen out of the, uh, the, the air and it processes it through your body to give you energy so your cells can divide, so your cells can operate. And it's amazing that when we do this, that we don't spontaneously combust because oxygen in its pure form is highly combustible. And this is what our body uses for energy. And this happens again without us even thinking about it. Uh, or the fact that 16 hours of your day while you're awake, your eyes are going to be processing information. It's going to be looking and analyzing and understanding everything that it is that you're uh, looking at. That your legs are going to take thousands of steps without you having to think, to coordinate, to do anything. That this all happens naturally. 
and maybe you got breakfast in the morning and you open your fridge and the fact that you even have a fridge to keep your food cold, uh, that it doesn't spoil, that you can have nice cold milk, that this can be transported without any disease, any bacteria to your home for, you know, dollars. So you can pour cereal. And where does that cereal come from? You think from grains, something that you would never eat on its own. It's processed. It's uh, produced, boxed, shipped. So you can pour a delicious bowl of cereal for yourself. Or maybe you have an apple or eggs. And you think about that apple. That apple came from the ground, from dirt. You put dead wood into the ground. You pour water and sunlight. And that's it. And from it comes a tree. And from this tree comes this delicious red apple out of dirt, <laughs> water, and uh Sunlight, you get delicious red, or maybe you had strawberries that you added to your uh, uh, cereal. And again, you think about this out of this, uh, where did this color come from? How is this produced? How, this technology that was provided for us to produce fruit, to produce vegetables, to produce grains, to produce uh, livestock, you know, eggs and uh, turkey bacon, you know, this was all given to us and you can heat it up. You think about that. You put, <laughs> you put a stove on and instantly you have fire. Uh, that's perfectly uh, calibrated for you to cook with, to heat up a pan with. Um, you put something into a microwave. Maybe you want to heat up some coffee or tea, and you put it into the microwave, and instantly, within a minute, it's hot at the perfect temperature. And again, all these blessings, and this isn't even to contemplate. Where does the energy come from? You know, who set up the roads, the transportation, the supply chain, all this stuff that we have for our convenience? Um, and yet, you know, we focus so much on our day to day to the things that are issues, the, the things that aren't going according to our plan. And we neglect all these infinite blessings. And we haven't even got started when you ate that food in your stomach, your intestines are able to digest that food to, to pull out the nutrients, to use that, to grow your body, to, to, to replicate your cells, to repair damaged cells, all these things that we can't even contemplate. I can't even put into words that this is all happening without you having to do any willpower. Your stomach never gets tired. Your intestines never complain. They never take a day off. Um, these are blessings that God has given us. And maybe you took a shower. Maybe you got up and you wanted to wake up and you turn on the water. And instantly you have fresh, clean water that you can set the perfect temperature to. You can go in there and get clean without any hassle. You think about it in the past, they had to go, if they had access to fresh water, it's going to probably be cold. It's going to be uh, very uh, tough to, to get in and uh, you're out in the open and it's not going to be as pleasant as it is today. Even if you're the poorest person, typically you have access to these things. Um, and, you know, you go to, to work, to school, um, to uh, drop off the kids or whatever, you know, and you get into your car. And you get, you can control the climate inside your car. And despite, you know, you might hit traffic, you might hit lights, you're perfectly protected in this vessel, uh, that you have your privacy, you have your, um, uh, your space and you can travel much faster than you ever could on foot. And you're not even breaking a sweat. Uh, quite the opposite. You get to listen to music. You get to listen to podcasts. Uh, you get to do all these amazing things at your, your privacy, your own convenience. Um, yet, you know, when we get stuck in traffic, what do we focus on? We focus on why am I, why is this taking so long? Why is this such an issue? And it all has to do with perspective. Um, when we think about it in the sense of a blessing or we think about it in the sense of a curse, either one we think about, that's what we're going to get. And again, we have that choice to say, are we going to be in a state of awe? Are we going to be in a state of gratitude, of appreciation? Or are we going to be in a state of uh, 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 being unappreciative, being miserable, being angry, being frustrated? Um, and, you know, so many of these blessings. And you think even the fact of my communicating with you, that I'm pushing air through my lungs, that it's vibrating by my vocal cords, being pushed out of my mouth, manipulated by my tongue into a microphone, processed through a computer, compressed into an MP3, transmitted wirelessly to your device so you can listen to it, so you can have a little bit of entertainment. And all this, you know, we think that this is normal, that this is just the, the state of things. And we don't realize what an absolute blessing this is, that, you know, these things that we think are normal um, aren't. There's no reason it should be this way. That you live in a society where there's rules and laws and technology. Uh, we might as well be microbes, you know, fending for our life, looking for that next uh, piece of glucose to survive. But that's not how life is. We have these opportunities to think, to contemplate, to communicate, to interact, to help one another. And um, what happens is after a while, we become habituated to our day-to-day. -day, and we think that these things, these blessings that we have, 
uh, we, we stop acknowledging them because they just kind of dissolve in the background of day-to-day -day life. We become zombies. And part of this is designed in such a way that we don't have to think about our heart beating 115,000 uh, times a minute uh, a day. We don't have to think about breathing. We don't have to think about seeing. These things just happen naturally. And part of it is the fact that, say, when you look through your eyes, if you look at through just one eye, what do you see? You see your nose, but you look through two eyes and your brain automatically takes out your nose. So you don't even notice it. You know, can you smell your nose? Can you feel the ground beneath your feet? It's because we've eliminated these things because they become commonplace that our brain says, okay, I'm going to allocate this processing power to other things, which is a blessing, but we have to be appreciative. We have to think back that this is not natural. That this aspect of coming into this life, having all these blessings, that this is something that we have to continuously remind ourselves and be appreciative for. You know, and you slowly, quickly start realizing that the, the blessings we have are absolutely infinite. Despite how bad things may appear or what we choose to focus on that's going to bring us down, that if we ever weighed this out with all the blessings we have versus anything that is bothering us, that the blessings are going to far exceed those uh, pitfalls that we see. But it's human tendency to focus on what's wrong, to focus on the issues. And this is part of development. It's because we identify these issues that we overcome them, that we make life better, more convenient, uh, more entertainment, more uh, uh, things to, uh, to give us joy and pleasure. But the flip side to that is that if we forget, we become habituated to our day to day and we forget about just how great we have things, then we become unappreciative. And God gives us the example of Job. In uh, chapter 38 uh, of the Bible, it says Job was complaining to uh, God for 30 plus chapters, you know, about how miserable his condition was and why God owed him so much for all the things, uh, the striving he's done. And you come to realize how skewed his judgment was that Job, despite all the hardship that he's facing, all the tragedy that uh, the devil put upon him, he's still severely blessed. And God owes him nothing, nothing, because if it was up to the angels, we would all be in hell. When we chose to rebel against God, the alternative was to go to hell. But God gave us the opportunity to redeem ourselves, to get make it back into God's kingdom. And God responds to Job. It reads, where were you when I began building the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who decided how big it was going to be since you know? Who looked to see if it was big as it should be? What was it built upon? Who laid its first stone when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God called out for joy? That Job had nothing to do with the creation of the heavens and the earth. That he had no say in any of this. Yet he feels entitled to God's blessings. And God can shower his blessings to whoever he wants. But you have to realize that God owes us nothing. That everything God has given us is net positive. That if God chooses to take it away because we're being unappreciative, that this is God's choice and we have to accept it wholeheartedly because we're still much better despite the fact of our any uh, loss or deprivation that we suffer. We are still much better. And the question is, which one are you going to focus on? And you think about this. If I was to give you a million dollars and say, you know what, I'm going to take back 500,000 of that, you'd probably be pretty miserable because one minute ago you were a millionaire now you only have $500,000, but that's the wrong perspective because the person who just got the $500,000 is going to be absolutely ecstatic for that blessing. And we have to remember, God gave us all this, all these infinite number of blessings and asked for nothing in return. And it's only up to us if we choose to be appreciative, if we choose to acknowledge this. And this is going to determine our eternity. Because if despite all the blessings we get, we're still unappreciative, that means nothing God is going to give us, give us is going to be able to change our mentality. This is something that's solely up to us. There's a story and it reads, it says a man reached 75 years of age and started having problems with his eyes and he could barely see. So he goes to the doctor and the doctor says, hey, you have a condition that we have to operate on. Otherwise, you're never going to be able to see again. And the, the old man says, yeah, of course, I'll give anything to get my eyesight back. So he goes through the surgery and it's successful and he's able to see again. And the doctor gives him the bill and the man immediately starts crying. And he says, you know, hey, if the, the bill's a problem, I can make it up to you. We can, uh, you know, schedule a payment plan. He says, no, 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 the bill is not a problem. For 75 years, I was able to see perfectly 
without any issues. And God never once sent me a bill. And that's what we have to remember. Everything we have is a net positive. Despite any downsides we see, we're still up because we have this tendency of focusing ourselves to some baseline. And you can see this. There is an example where people, if their income continuously goes up, they're happy. If they start from a high income and their income goes down, that they get miserable. And it's because their baseline was the fact that they thought they had a high income, but it's not. They're still at a net positive, and you have to remember that. To judge ourselves based on our perceptions, based on what we think we should be, this is the wrong mentality because we're always going to be in the green. We're always going to be in the net positive. And there's a simple equation. It's happiness is expectations minus reality. When we set the expectations too high and we think that we're entitled to certain things, that's when we're going to be disappointed because the reality is, We should have zero expectations. Our expectations should be, we should have been in hell and completely forgotten. But by God's leave, we were given another chance. We were given all these blessings, you know, all these things that we mentioned and so many more that we can't even contemplate. That's going to be unique to each individual. This is all the positive that we have. So our expectations needs to be readjusted to the point that we didn't deserve any of this. God gave us the hearing, the eyesight, the mind, all the infinite number of blessings, the fact that we're in a protected earth, that we look up at the sky, that, you know, we're not being bombarded by UV rays and x-rays, that, you know, we're perfectly shielded. These are all the blessings. And um, the second that we forget about that, the second that we take that for granted, that's when we become unappreciative. And the unappreciative person is always going to be miserable. The question is, what comes first? being appreciative or being happy? And the answer is you have to be appreciative. Otherwise, you will never be happy. And we have to be in this constant state of awe. Uh, Rumi wrote, sell your cleverness and buy bewilderment. Because when we're in a state of awe, when we're absolutely marveled by the blessings that God has given us, we're never going to have a reason to feel upset, to feel unhappy, to complain. We never are going to feel entitled to anything because we realize God gave us all this. And it's up to us if we want to maintain it, if we want to grow from it, or if we want to regress and become unappreciative. And just to give you a reminder of how absolutely amazing life is, the earth itself is spinning at a thousand miles per hour. The earth is rotating around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour. The sun is moving, hurling through the Milky Way at 72,000 miles per hour. And the Milky Way galaxy itself is moving at a uh, speed of 1.3 million miles per hour. And we don't sense any of that. We're perfectly protected on this vessel in planet Earth despite hurling at these insane speeds. And you just think about that, that God designed all this, that it's perfectly calculated, perfectly designed. And anything that happens in our life, again, is a blessing from God. Even the the, the ground that we sit, uh, stand on, the ground that we're walking on, that this is just a thin layer on top of molten lava that's in the 4,000 degrees Celsius, just Literally 25 miles down, which sounds like a lot, but when you take in consideration that the diameter of the earth is just shy of 8,000 meters, sorry, 8,000 miles, that that's less than 1% of the earth's crust is uh, 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 the depth before you get into molten lava. And God has designed all this perfectly. The fact that we're sitting on a sea of lava, yet we're perfectly protected, that we're hurling through space, and again, that we're perfectly protected, that this is absolute blessing from God. And this is not to think that this is normal. This is a blessing. We were brought into this world and we had all this technology. We had all these blessings and the way our bodies work, the way that the uh, universe is constructed, the way the earth is constructed, the food, the supply chains, all these things that are uh, man-made, that are designed by God, given to man so we can better ourselves, that this is an absolute blessing. This is weird. You know, this is not meant to be uh, for us to take for granted. And um, there's this tendency that, again, we want more, that we're never going to be satisfied. And there's a, a hilarious story. It was a grandma. She's walking on the beach with her child and um, uh, the infant gets swept away by a wave. And she's praying to God, please, God, please, God, save my child, send them back. And another wave comes and it plop, the baby lands back on the beach. And the grandma's response was, he was wearing a hat. 
And that's the, the reality is that despite the blessings, all these imploring of God that we do and all the blessings that God has given us, we constantly focus on the things that are trivial that don't matter. You know, where's the baby's hat? The baby is alive. The baby's returned back to its original state that it didn't drown in the ocean. And what can the person think of? Oh, that he, yeah, she lost the hat. That they're thinking in the sense of a net negative, not in the sense of a net positive that you just gained your uh, grandchild back. And we see this in the example of the, the children of Israel. When Pharaoh saved them from the persecution of Pharaoh, who was killing their firstborn, treat, uh, turned them into slaves, that when they were freed from this, their response was recalled that you said, O oh Moses, we can no longer tolerate one kind of food. Call upon your Lord to produce for us such earthly crops as beans, cucumbers, garlic, lentils, and onions. He said, Do you wish to substitute that which is inferior for that which is good? Go down to Egypt where you can find what you asked for. They have incurred condemnation, humiliation, and disgrace, and brought upon themselves wrath from God. This is because they rejected God's revelations and killed the prophets unjustly. This is because they disobeyed and transgressed. And there's nothing wrong with supplication, asking God for things. But when we become unappreciative of the blessing that God has given us, that God has freed these people, saved these people from persecution, allowed them to worship God freely, has provided for them food that they don't need to work for, they don't need to do anything, that while they're traveling, that they're well nourished, yet they became unappreciative and they wanted more to the point that they said, we can no longer tolerate what God has given us. We want more. We want to be persecuted. We want to be uh, turned back into slaves because they preferred the things of this life over winning God's uh, uh, righteousness. God willing, we're going to end there. If you guys got comments, questions, hit us up at crontalk at gmail.com. And until next time, peace and God bless.